It's Wednesday. It's April 10th. It's 2019. And the Jacob Young Show is back live. I was traveling with my family for a few weeks, enjoying a little spring break with my wife and kids. It's that, it was that time of year. All the kids got off to school. It's nice to be back, and it's nice to see everyone. Uh, where obviously there's a few people in the room right now. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping you guys all had a nice spring break. If you have little ones or just enjoyed the spring break anyway. Um, we, uh, make sure you also, you, you write into the show tonight and leave your comments about anything that, uh, you want to talk about or any of the subjects that we're talking about. Yeah, we had a nice drive. We drove from Utah all the way out to Colorado to see my wife's brother and his, his wife and their new baby Quinn, which was really nice. We had a really lovely time. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that's what we were up to. Tell me what you guys were up to. I'm wondering if this is broadcasting right now. It looks like it is. It says it's live. All right. Well, um, anyway, I have a very special guest. Please let me know if I'm coming in loud and clear. Uh, I'm not sure if this thing shut down or, or what this evening. Um, looks like we're having some slow time. Uh, good evening. Let's see. Um, you guys seeing me? Boom, 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 boom. Well, I hope so because I'm not seeing it live on my feed over here, but please let me know if you're seeing me or not. So I'll continue. Otherwise, I will have to do something to make it work right. Okay, perfect. Aaron, yes, yes, perfect. All right, very good. Well, I'm going to move right along with the show because I've got a really great show tonight, uh, and that's why I didn't want to pass anything up. Uh, I've got my very, a very special guest interview this week. You know his face from daytime TV, and more specifically, the bold and the beautiful Sean Kanan is on the show this week. And all the B&B fans will recognize him as bad boy Deacon Sharp. Sean also played Deacon on The Young and the Restless and was A.J. Quartermain on General Hospital. And for all you Karate Kid movie fans out there, you'll recognize him as Mike Barnes in The Karate Kid Part 3. Get up, Russo! <laughs> Not only is Sean an accomplished actor, but he's also an author. He's going to be telling us all about his new book, Success Factor X. And in this new book, Sean... And motivational speaker Jill Lieberman interviewed 50 successful people talking about the mysterious X factor that makes some people uber successful. And in the book, there's, an ins there's insight from people like Jason Alexander, Don King, Mark Cuban, and even, yes, you guessed it, the queen of daytime herself, Susan Lucci. And you'll see Sean's interview later in the show, so please stay tuned. Now, there's lots of news to talk about this week. Unfortunately, most of it involves people going to court. Former Desperate Housewives star Felicity Huffman made a guilty plea in the big college and university entry scam. This could cost her four to ten months in jail. Felicity has made a public apology and looks genuinely sorry about making a financial bribe to raise her daughter's SAT scores. On the other hand, Lori Laughlin has remained all smiles, even signing autographs outside of the, the courthouse. Her body language was even described to, by one witness as defensive. There's so much more money involved in this case against Lori Laughlin and her designer husband that they could literally face years in prison. Now, I've heard uh, various comments about from other people, of course, that they say some people don't think that she's going to spend time in prison. But how do you all feel about this? Should the people be, that are involved with this scam get community service or should there be a full house? Ooh, Chime in. Let me know what you're thinking. And I'll read your comments as we continue with our show. You know, um, I wanted to take a second, you know, I found this little clip today um, on YouTube because one of the, one of the country crooners of the 70s and 80s, even into the 90s, he had several hits, um, passed away today at 77. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Earl Thomas Conley, um, and I found this really cool uh, clip. I found a really cool clip on the internet. It's only one minute, so just bear with me. I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to hear this because it's I have a good, good system in here. Right 
One of his biggest hits, of course. But anyway, there was so many, so many hits, and he'll be dearly missed. I even read an article by Blake Shelton today that his heart was broken. So God rest your soul. God rest your soul, Earl Thomas Conley. Um, so, yeah, so the music of two pop 80s icons, speaking about music, it's also having its day in court right now. According to Rolling Stone, a Minnesota court has upheld an arbitration ruling against Prince's engineer to pay, pay the Prince estate close to four million dollars for trying to release unauthorized Prince music in 2017. Um, and before I go into the next story, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple comments because I see some stuff coming up right now. Um, Candace says, I mean, really, it's, it's nobody might not go to jail, but sadly it is too, sorry, my chat is buried. Uh, sadly, it's too full, so most likely they'll do community service owe money as well. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of community service in their future. Garrett says, to have no faith in your own kids is horrible. To lie and bribe your kids sets what example? Shame on them. You know, I, 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 I see the only positive I see is them trying to do something nice for their kids. But at the same time, it's such a horrible act at the same time. It's, you know, they, they pr probably tried to mean well secretly, which is really dirty. Um, and, you know, I don't contone that at all. I mean, but... As a father, I know I would want the best, but I know I wouldn't go about it in an illegal matter. Of course, I think you're not teaching your children anything anyway when you're doing stuff like that. Um, so continuing on with more um, kind of sad news. but So Cindy Lauper is now also in the hot seat for a song that she wrote in the finale of her Tony Award winning Broadway musical, Kinky Boots. Of course, what I'm talking about. Kinky Boots closed this Sunday after six years on Broadway. And it's now the 25th longest-running show in Broadway history. Lopper was there at the, the closing night party, along with former cast members like Brendan Urie from Panic at the Disco. Girls just want to have fun. But it wasn't all smiles for Cindy Lopper. She's being sued by her two song by two songwriters for allegedly lifting their song into the night and using it in kinky boots. They claim that their song has literally been copied note for note. And they say that the two songs are identical in form, harmonic progression, and rhythm. Their song, Into the Night, ranked near the top of the Billboard's Hot 100 charts both in 1980 and 1989. And I'm sure you can find the song on YouTube and compare that to Cyndi Lauper's song, Raise You Up, and you see for yourself, you know, what you think. Of course, Cyndi Lauper and the producers of Kinky Boots are denying the allegations 100%. There's big money on the table for this one. Kinky Boots has made over 300 Three hundred million dollars, and and the Into the Night songwriters, they want a piece of that action. Both sides were unable to reach agreement in their arbitration, so it's going to be court, going to court. Well, likely will take years for them to decide. Now, I guess my question is, did Cindy Lauper show her true colors, or is it easy for, to find similarities in songs that are purely coincidental? Let me know what you think. Now. On to some positive news. Prince Harry is about to become a producer, and not just a, a producer of a new baby. It's just been announced that Prince Harry will executive produce a new documentary series with Oprah Winfrey for Apple TV, focusing on mental health issues. Prince Harry said that the series will be positive, it'll be enlightening, it'll be inclusive, with people sharing their global stories of human spirits fighting back from the darkest places. It gives an opportunity for us to understand ourselves and those around us better this, this should be a really cool project because you know we've talked about mental health a lot on our show and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, this series of course with you know uh, producers like Oprah Winfrey I'm sure it's going to be a, a great success uh, the project came about in co conversation with Oprah and the Prince when she asked him what his two most important issues were and Prince Harry said climate change and mental health Speaking of climate change, Prince Harry, along with his father and brother, were at the London premiere last week for the Netflix series, Our Planet. Have any of you seen this series or seen any of the episodes yet? It's fantastic. It's one of the most amazing, eye-opening programs Netflix has tackled. It's been four years in the making, and it's really worth checking out. Our Planet on Netflix. Let's see if we have any, any questions or any comments coming in. Candace says, if the parents want to do something nice for them, buy them a puppy. <laughs> not a free education. 
Cindy does so much good. Didn't hear about the lawsuit. So, uh, yeah. So it is. It is true. I don't know if she intentionally did it. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe she just couldn't figure out that one last song. I hope that's not the case. <laughs> uh, so it seems that our entire planet right now is getting ready for one thing the new avengers movie the end game it premieres on april 26th and has crashed entire websites because of the demand for tickets and let me know if you're an avengers fan and you're gearing up to see what they're calling the ultimate avengers movie and if you're if you're buying if you've been trying to get tickets for this movie on opening weekend you might have to spend anywhere between 2500 to $15,000, and you'll spend about the same amount at the concession stand. So speaking of an Avenger, an Avenger, say that three times fast, Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor, just tossed his hat in the ring to play James Bond after Daniel Craig retires from, his, from the role. And there, I mean, I want to know right now, are there any 007 fans out there? Write in and let me know who you think would make a good James Bond. That's always a good conversation. And yes, I'm also available for that role. Uh, next up is my interview with Sean Kanan himself. We worked together on The Bold and the Beautiful, and I was pumped when he reached out to, to me to ask me to share, about, to share his new book, do an interview, uh, because it's really going to change some lives. And without any further ado, oh, and I want to give one little disclaimer, uh, you know, just like good friends getting together and seeing each other again. I might have had a couple uh, swear words that came out, and I want to apologize, so if you can't handle a couple swear words i'm sorry it's just uh it's just a little bit of the real jacob came out so that's my disclaimer i'm sticking to it all right so here we go let me bring that interview up and here it is you know so i don't know like everybody's like pissed drunk and i'm like walking around Whoa. and and quarter main on general hospital and sean first became known around the world for his role in Karate Kid Part 3. And tonight, he's going to tell us all about his new book, Success Factor X, and a lot, lot more. Sean, welcome to the show. Jacob, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, man. You know, I'm so used to seeing you in the halls at CBS TV City, but I haven't seen you in a long time, and you've been a really busy guy. Yeah, well, thank you. You know, unfortunately, uh, our storylines didn't cross a whole lot. We didn't have the chance... <laughs> to work with each other, uh, which I would have really liked to have done, by the way. Well, I mean, uh, we should have had, you know, like a, uh, a Deacon, you know, a Rick uh, love story. I, listen, <laughs> I, it, it, at this point, uh, you know, I'd be happy to get any stories. <laughs> you know how it is. I hear but, you, man. Uh, it would have it been a lot of fun to work with you because, you know, Deacon worked with Rick uh, a lot when, uh, when Justin Torgelson was playing him. But um, anyway, I'm really happy to sit down with you. Uh, it's going to be nice to – to get a chance to talk. Yeah, man, absolutely, 100%. I want to talk about your book. I mean, let's let's talk yeah. about that. Let's kick it off on the right foot, man. Tell us about Success Factor X. So Success Factor X uh, is a book that I put together with my partner, Jill Lieberman. And what we did was we went out to 50 of America's Best and we said, what is your best advice about success? Uh, what can you share about how you became successful, about what success means to you? And we got such an amazing group of people to respond. We got uh, business titans like Mark Cuban. We got inspirational guru Tony Robbins. We got Sarah Blakely, who's the first female billionaire. And then we got a completely different, very diverse group of people. We got Daryl McDaniels from Run DMC. Mm -hmm. uh, we got famous baseball players and football players from the world of daytime. Uh, we have Susan Lucci, we have Kate Linder, uh, Steve Burton, Jennifer Finnegan. So we got this really crazy diverse group of people all talking about what success means to them. And, um, you know, one of the reasons that Jill and I put this book together was that we are living in such divisive times right now. You know, our society has become so completely polarized. And Jill and I wanted to do something that we thought could be uh, you know, a unifying force, something that would act as a bridge or a conduit to bring people together. And so we settled upon the idea of doing a project that had to do with success because we figured success is something that everybody's invested in. We want it for ourselves. We want it for our, our children, for our loved ones. And then we had to decide what was going to be the delivery system for the message. And we came up with uh, a book. We thought that would be the best way to do this. The genesis of this project is really funny because I did a book with Jill 15 years ago as a participant. I was in a book that she created 
called um, American Pride. And she called me to wish me happy birthday. I hadn't spoken to her in years. And by the time we got off the phone, we were writing partners and we had started this project. Nice. Isn't yeah. that funny how that happens? It is. And, and you know, I think it's so interesting that you have such a diverse field of people discussing success because success is in, it comes in so many forms and people judge your success. I judge my success differently than you may judge your success. And I think mm. it's really good to be able to get that, that wide spectrum from athletes to rappers to, you know, motivational speakers. You know, you, know, you, ra- you raise a really interesting point. Um, I think a lot of people initially uh, attribute sex, success to to sort of outward manifestations, you know, wealth, power, material possession, et cetera. And one of the most fascinating parts of this whole project was the common denominator that unified all of these participants. And they really spoke about success in terms of their ability to give back, their ability to, to be of service, to inspire other people, to help them follow their dreams, to pay it forward. Uh, and, you know, for me, inspiring other people is, is something that uh, I'm very committed to. Um, I, I would say that you, you are, too, in, in doing your podcast. Uh, and, you know, look, let's just face it. It feels good to, to be of service, to help other people. And, and Jill and I both think that this book uh, really hits the nail on the head with that topic. Well, that was well said, man. You know, it does feel good to do that. And um, we, we reach out in our own ways. And, and you know, and, and speaking of reaching out, because it's not your first time that you've dabbled in uh, being an author. You had a cookbook, uh, and the cookbook uh, was called uh, The Modern Gentleman, Cooking and Entertaining with Sean Kanan. I, I, I love to cook, so you're right up my alley with this one. Tell us about that book. Uh, so I've loved to cook for as long as I can remember. Uh, it started out in uh, college, you know, I couldn't really afford to take girls to fancy dinners and I figured if I could provide them with a home cooked meal, maybe I could try and get the ball rolling. (laughs) Um, you know, I love cooking and the book though is a lot more than a cookbook. It's really a hybrid. It's a book that shows guys how to be the best possible version of themselves and hopefully shows women a little bit about how we as guys think. So interspersed with the chapters about setting up your kitchen and and how to entertain and all the cookbook recipes are a number of chapters. Uh, uh, one of the chapters is called The Modern Gentleman Defends Himself. And a lot of people know that I've been involved in martial arts most of my life and it's made a profound impact on my life. And so I talk about how studying a martial art has, has helped me. Uh, another chapter is The Modern Gentleman Studies a Foreign Language. And you know, one of the things I started doing when I realized how popular Bold the Beautiful was in Italy was I started to learn Italian. And it's amazing how, how studying a foreign language really opens you up to another culture. So there's all these different chapters that I think um, offer ways of showing guys how to be, how to be a gentleman. Yeah. You know, how to, how to be your best possible you. So that's that's the book in a nutshell. Well, I better start reading it and sharpen up on my gentleman skills. Well, I'm going to send you a copy. You're going to give me your address afterwards. I would love you. that. I would love that, man. Uh, so switching gears slightly, I mean, most fans know you for your work on television and in movies. And I read that the role of Deacon Sharp, who you played on The Bold and the Beautiful, is one of your favorite characters as you played. It really is. Uh, you know, I've always been interested in characters that operate within the parameters of the grays of life. And by that, I mean, you know, with few exceptions, things are not generally black and white. You know, very few exceptions. Things aren't always good or always bad. And um, I, I think to play a guy that's so morally ambiguous and that ostensibly seems like he really is not a great guy and has done a lot of stuff that's really reprehensible, but on some strange level operates with this sort of personal code that Deacon has, which, I mean, it's not something that you and I would def, you know, necessarily call um, um, an honorable code, but in a weird way, uh, just when you think Deacon's as bad as he can get, he turns around and does something that gives him a redemptive quality. And I, I find that interesting. Uh, you know, Brad Bell created this character. Uh, I'm, I'm the only actor that's played it. I've had the opportunity to play it on both The Bold, The Beautiful, and The Young and the Restless. And, you know, with with the incredible power that both of these shows have in being distributed throughout the world, it has afforded me some amazing, amazing uh, opportunities to do things in other countries and to interact with people from 
all sorts of different societies and cultures. Yeah, no, and we're going to be touching on some of that because I've got some questions about that. And I know sure. the fans would like to hear about that too. And just to go over a little bit of what you were discussing about learning other languages, would you, did Italy ever ask you to dub over Deacon, you know, in Italian? No, they didn't ask me to dub it over. And I'm not sure about this, but somebody told me that the guy that does Deacon's voice is the same guy that did Russell Crowe's voice in Gladiator, which I think is really cool. That's so cool. they, they they didn't ask me to do it, but apparently I've got a very cool voice in Italian. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, tried, I heard mine in Italian. I sounded like a girl. I mean, I thought that's no, a bad thing. No. <laughs> they, like, apparently in Italy they think Rick is a real wiener. Um, no. No, I meant winner. Winner. He's winner, a winner. winner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Aaron Spelling show, Sunset Beach, has become, it was a, cl- a cult classic soap. You were the last role to be cast on that show's final season. What are some of your favorite memories doing that show and with Aaron Spelling? Um, you know, I, I didn't have the chance to meet Mr. Spelling when I was cast on the show and about a year and a half, two years afterwards, I think my father and I were in Las Vegas. My dad was there for a, uh, business conference and I was with him and, uh, we saw Aaron Spelling whom I had never met. And I said, you know, dad, I think I'm going to go over and say hi to him. Um, I, I don't know that he'll know me, but I, I'll tell him I'm on one of his shows. And I went over and I introduced myself and I said, Mr. Spelling, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a real honor to work for you. And he proceeded to kind of gush to my father about me as an actor. And I was so blown away because I don't know if he, he really knew who I was or he didn't, but he was so unbelievably gracious. And, you know, look, we all want to make our fathers proud. And to have a guy like Aaron Spelling there you know, singing your praises was a pretty memorable moment for me. Oh, no, I could, I could imagine. I never met Aaron Spelling, but back in the day, I used to hang out with Randy Spelling. And, well, Randy on and, the show, too. Yeah, I remember. And he, he took me over to the mansion one night after some oh, crazy, wow. crazy-ass party. We went downstairs. You know, Tori was there. Like, everybody was there. They have, like, a bowling alley downstairs. This is the old mansion. It's been sold now. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, you, you mean not the... Are you talking about the huge one that's in Holmby Hills? Yeah, the, the like the biggest house in all of like yeah, Beverly yeah, yeah. Hills or that's Holmby crazy. Hills. Yeah, and he uh, so you know so I don't know like everybody's like pissed drunk and I'm like walking around and and Randy's like yeah sure check out the place or whatever so we go I walk from downstairs I start walking upstairs yeah it's, it's not pitch black you know but it's you know vaguely lit and right. all of a sudden like I've got like security on me like. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And so I got they're everything going. I don't know if I'd like that. Yeah, they're I don't like know if I would want all of my shenanigans being watched twenty four seven by security. Something tells me Randy knew what the fuck he was doing, but <laughs> <laughs> Joke, right? Yeah, no, but uh, but uh, yeah, I pretty much got kicked out of the mansion that night. Oh no, <laughs> no, it was all good. That's a great story, though. Yeah, and, and and Mr. Spelling was sleeping somewhere in that massive mansion, so I, that was my closest, you know, shoulder rubbing to him. So the the Karate Kid movies are all time classics. What was your training background to prepare for that film? I know you touched base on that a little bit. So uh, I had started studying Shotokan Karate. Uh, uh, with my teacher, William Stoner in Pennsylvania, when I was about 13 years old, I'd studied for uh, several years. Um, when I had moved out to Los Angeles, I was about 19 years old. And my karate school in Pennsylvania had merged with uh, a karate school in California that was headed by a gentleman named Master Fumio Demura. And Sensei Demura happened to be Pat Morita's stunt double. Oh. And so he knew that I wanted to be an actor and he told me, that there was going to be this uh, this open call for uh, the part of Mike Barnes, which at the time was described as a white Mike Tyson. <laughs> uh, and uh, I went and I, I went to the open call and uh, eventually I got the part. As far as my training goes, um, once I got the part, I was trained by a gentleman named Pat Johnson. And Pat Johnson's an interesting guy. Uh, he acted in... Uh, he acted in uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. He was captain of Chuck Norris's demo team in the late 60s. He's a ninth degree Don in Tang Soo Do. And uh, he was responsible for all the fight choreography for the Karate Kid movies, for the Ninja Turtles, and for what's the one that's based on that video game? Street uh, Mortal Fighter. Com- or, Mortal- no, Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Awesome. It's- anyway, I was in very good hands. So I had some very strong uh, initial training, which obviously was fundamental, 
in, 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 in my getting the role. I mean, to, to teach somebody who had never studied any martial arts to look like they're a black belt, I think would have been difficult. And if not difficult, certainly would have taken a significant amount of time. So I was, I was fortunate. Yeah, man, it sounds like it. And your acting skills. Get up, Russo! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I, I hadn't really studied acting um, prior to doing that role. Uh, a, a lot of that stuff that you see at the final tournament, that was all ad lib stuff. They just said, you know, kind of go nuts yeah, and say what try you and want. Them and, and do it. So, um, yeah. Well, you certainly couldn't tell that it was, you know, that you hadn't had any training that way. I mean, I, I, when you talk about success, you're already on that mental discipline with the, the martial arts. And, and I guess that breeds right into that, you know, what we were talking about. Um, now, I just saw you made an indie film called Abracadabra that was, that was screened at the Cannes Film Festival and was directed by Al Pacino's daughter, Julie Pacino. Right. Now, what the heck was that like? Yeah, you know, uh, listen, anytime you get to do a project that's associated with Al Pacino as a producer, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. It was a really cool um, short film. Uh, I played a guy that was uh, uh, a religious fanatic who kidnaps a little boy. And, um, you know, we shot in New York. I'd never filmed in New York before. Uh -huh. Filming on the streets in New York is the most exhilarating thing that you can imagine because it doesn't matter what you're filming. There's a, a big crowd, you yeah. know, start to, to form, right? It doesn't course, stop. Of course, as an actor, you know, you're not concerning yourself with the crowd. You're, you're, you're being in the scene in the moment. But as soon as you're done, you know, there's this wild applause and you're like, what's going on? And it yeah. just... It really is invigorating as an actor. Uh, uh, we um, we did a scene at a church, and I don't remember the name of the church, but interesting story. It was where they filmed The Godfather, the scene where uh, Michael Corleone is having his, his baby baptized, and as that's happening, he's also wiping out all of his, 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 uh, his enemies. Well, the baby that was being baptized in The Godfather was actually Julie Pacino. Oh. So here I am doing a movie directed by Julie Pacino <laughs> in the church, and she played the baby thing. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. He's like, you want to use my daughter? Go ahead. <laughs> <Ooh -la>. uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, I, you know, I saw a recent picture of you online, and you were completely bald. You shaved your head for a new uh, movie, Verotica. Tell us, tell the viewers about that movie and what that so, was like. So uh, this movie was uh, – this movie is based on a graphic novel um, by a musician named Glenn Danzig. And Glenn Danzig is the lead singer of the band Danzig and the Misfits. And, uh, you know, they offered me this role to play uh, Detective Anders, which is, uh, it's three vignettes. It's three different stories comprised this film. And I was the male lead in, in, in my vignette. And he said, look, here's the thing. You, you, gotta, you gotta shave your head bald. And I said, okay, so we're not we're not using skull caps or anything. And he's like, no, I want absolute reality. And I said, look, if that's what the part calls for, I'm an actor, and I shaved my head. I've never shaved it before. It was definitely <laughs> interesting walking around with no hair. Uh, people tend to look at you very differently. Uh, the 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 one the one thing that I heard over and over again is, wow, you look really intimidating. And I was like, that's good because that's what the character was supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, the other thing is. Two other things, Jacob. You don't know what your head looks like till you shave it, okay? <laughs> like, you may have a really misshapen noggin. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I don't think I did. And then you don't know if your hair is going to grow back. So <laughs> you don't know if it's not going to grow back in the front or whatever. Fortunately, uh, it's all coming back evenly, <laughs> slowly, evenly. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can relate because I did shave my head for almost an entire year when I was on All, all My Children for a cancer storyline. Oh, and, so you know exactly what it's about. Well, and, you know, Julie Carruthers was producing the show at the time. She goes, <laughs> she's like, she's like, I want you to shave your head. You're not wearing a bald cap. And I'm like, all right, all right, I, I'll do it. But I didn't realize just how much maintenance it is. I mean, because you have to shave it every day. You can't have stubble. Yeah. Like your hair is growing yeah. back. Five o'clock shadow in your head. Yeah. And so I just got used to blading it, and I was on a date with my wife. I was at Little Door in Los Angeles. Love Little Door. Yeah, I love yeah, the place. Yeah, great place, right? We had this really awesome waiter. He was bald. He came yeah. up to me, and he's like, I did the same thing when the hair just started going, and I just bladed it off. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to offend him, so I just said, you know, 
Hey, man, I, I hear you. That's that's exactly what I did. I didn't want to say, hey, man, I got a full head of hair under this shit right here. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be in unity with the guy who's bringing you your food. Totally. Um, so we do do book giveaways on the show. Uh, would you possibly be willing to sign an, a book and we could promote it and, and do a giveaway of Success Factor X or one of the cookbooks? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one uh, for Success Factor X and I'll also give you one for The Modern Gentleman. Awesome. Uh, what, uh, Success Factor X is not coming out uh, until May 15th. So I may have them a little bit earlier than that. So as soon as I get one, I will absolutely uh, send it off to you. Awesome. And, but we'll run the competition in the meantime because I always right. I run it over several shows. Um, and I always I hold, uh, you know, maybe it's a maybe it's something about Sean Kanan, a little fact or something that somebody has to know. I'll figure something out. But okay. it's always a fun giveaway and, and people get really into it. And remind everyone, again, where, where they can buy the book, Success Rector X, when it does come out, um, inspiration, wisdom, advice from 50 of America's best. Well, it's going to be in different stores, but the easiest place to get it, of course, is on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, you can always follow me um, on Twitter, and we have lots of signings set up. We're going to be doing one at The Grove in Los Angeles. We have one uh, at the end of next month in uh, Palm Springs. Uh, we've got another one in uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey at Bookends. Uh, those are all on the website, uh, which is successfactorxbook.com. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, keep up with what, everything that's going on. Right on, right on. And you guys heard it there first. That's where you got to follow. Make sure you stay up to date on Success Factor X. I know it's going to be a great read. And, Sean, it's always a pleasure taking some time, taking time talking with you. And thank you so much for being on the Jacob Young Show. Uh, everybody, hey. yeah, make sure you go out there and you buy Success Factor X. It's going to be a life-changing book. I want to add just one more thing, too, that we are giving a portion of the profits uh, to the American Red Cross. They are the preeminent disaster relief organization throughout the world. It's an amazing cause, and um, you know we're very happy and proud to be doing that. That's amazing. That is amazing. And, and, and anybody wants to see what the book looks like, here it is right now. I'm throwing it up right on my camera up on top here. Sean can't see that because my he can't see the camera that right. I'm in, which is kind of funny. But that's what the cover looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Sean, I cannot wait to, to read the book, and, and thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you so much, buddy, and I look forward to sending those books out to you, okay? Right on, brother. Talk to you Bye -bye. soon. Bye. All right. Thank you, Sean, for being on the show. I hope everyone will pick up a copy of Sean's new book, Success Factor X. I'm wishing Sean a big, big success on a, and a bestseller. You know, it's so funny. I wanted to mention this because... You know, doing this live show like this, you know, it's getting easier and there's, there's, you know, certain learning curves, of course, to this. And I'm so thankful that we have programs like Skype or Google Hangouts or FaceTime where I can actually interface with, you know, folks like, like Sean's in Palm Springs. I'm here in Utah. Um, and, and so, but what I always think is funny is most people will use like a, their phone or their uh, iPad uh, very, very seldom do I get anybody to actually use a computer these days. So you always have to tell them to flip the, flip it sideways. One, and most of the time they don't have a stand, so they're they're trying to figure out where to put their phone or how to prop up their phone. Sean was literally using. He's probably gonna kill me. He was using boxes and pillows, and there was two barking dogs that kept coming after. You know, they were hearing my voice through the thing, and it was it, it was a riot. But but this is the this is modern technology. It's cool. It's raw, and I love uh, I love being able to do that, and I love being able to interview my friends and and new people as well. Um, and, and next week, of course, and I've been talking about it for some time, but I'll actually be doing it doing it live in Seattle. Uh, it's my good friend Jim Borstelman, of course. I keep talking about him, but we were having, as you can see, I have a new microphone, and I've been talking about interviewing him and I had I had some mi microphone malfunction so I had to get a new uh, microphone and I love this new microphone it's the uh, podmaster or uh, roadcaster um, and it's it's great it's a it's not a expensive microphone but it's a really good microphone uh, a lot of people are raving about it so I'm happy to say that but we're going to be interviewing Jim of course he was in Young Frankenstein the Adams family um, and if you're watching the FX series uh, 
uh, Fosse and, and Verdun, uh, starring Sam Rockwell and Michelle Williams. Jim is going to be talking about uh, being the original cast of uh, an original cast and choreographer Bob Fosse's musical Chicago. You get to meet Jim next week. Um, and of course, you know, uh, I'm Actors Technique New York. I'm, it's all kicking off. I'm very excited about this. I just had a great interview on Fresh Living. It's a local 1 o'clock afternoon show on K- KTUV or KTVU. It's a Channel 2. See, they, I guess Bold and the Beautiful comes on right after that, um, speaking of which. And uh, I, I'm very excited. So this Saturday, April 13th, we have a free audit class here. And then, of course, on the 27th is when classes. It takes up my Saturdays. But I, but I love being able to, to give back and teach. It's such a, a great experience. Um, you learn so much about yourself, and I really feel like this is a, it's a journey. Um, and I think Garen was asking me a little earlier about, you know, what's your next film? I, I just auditioned. I can't really say anything about it, but I just auditioned for a really, really cool part in a really big, you know, box office film uh, starring a major, major star on a very poignant story. It's a really incredible story. Um, I've, I've been trying to get in on this movie. There's a couple roles that I've auditioned for. They haven't cast any of them yet, but um, I'd be happy with any one of them and being a part of it. So I'm hoping that that comes together. Fingers crossed. Um, so, yeah, any more questions, comments coming in here? Um, I saw Kenneth was here for a minute. He might, I think, maybe still here. Um, I was bleeped out by my wife. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Stacy. Uh, th- and, th- you know... I, there's going to be a great show next week. I'm, it seems like a, seems like this this interview is actually going to be happening with my good friend Jim. So I hope you guys will all you know tune in for that. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for j- joining the conversation. And if you or your friends want to hear your comments again from tonight's show, you can always watch me on the Jacob Young Show anytime on YouTube. And make sure you tune in again next week, because even if you miss a little, you miss a lot. Thanks and good night. <laughs>